Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is another collaboration with the one and only Jesse from the YouTube channel, Jesse's Barbershop. And today, we're gonna be talking some serious hair. Lately, I've seen an increasing amount of posts and comments in the Man Buns and Mains community, particularly from guys with thick, coarse, or curly hair, thinking that their hair is completely unmanageable and beyond help when it comes to making it look good. And what we really wanted to do was just share our two cents on the importance of hair product when it comes to thicker, curlier hair types, because they really are the key. And then of course, after sharing our thoughts, we're gonna walk the talk and take you through some of our own personal routines and products that we use in order to get our hair under control. Sound good? I'll start, shall I? So, my two cents on the importance of hair products. Being a guy with coarse, curly hair myself, Using products has been the difference between me loving and hating my hair, okay? Honestly, I used to despise my natural coarse hair and the last seven years of making hair content on this platform is really what's allowed me to master the different techniques and different product combinations that I actually need in order to make it work for me. So the two most important things that I've learned when it comes to choosing the right hair products really comes down to two core concepts. Number one, understanding the type of hair we're working with. In our case today, it's understanding what makes thick, coarse, curly hair unmanageable to begin with. And then number two, having a really clear picture of what we're trying to achieve with our hair. Like, What's the measurement of success here? How do we know if we've won the battle? Are we buying this product with just hopes that it's gonna do something? Or are we buying it with intention because we've done our research and we're fairly confident that it's what we need? If we look at core concept number one, understanding what makes thick, coarse, curlier hair types unmanageable to begin with, there's actually a magnitude of reasons. <laughs> but for the sake of this video, I'm gonna focus on one of the most common reasons because once I got my head around this one thing, it completely changed the way I looked at styling my hair and gave me so much more control over it in the end. And I'm kicking myself that I didn't do it earlier. And that common reason is higher porosity. High porosity hair can happen for also a magnitude of reasons. However, it can be a very natural thing. And my hair is a classic example of it. <laughs> Hello, this is me after a wash with no product in my hair. I have not done any chemical treatments, no bleaching. I've used very little heat on this current hair growth journey that I'm on, and this is still the result I get. <laughs> and basically what high porosity means is that the hair can easily absorb a lot of moisture, which is why it looks pretty awesome when it's wet, like the curls look pretty awesome, and I wish it could kind of stay in that shape, but just dry a little bit. But it also releases that moisture just as easily as it absorbs it, because the cuticles on the outer layer, like the little fish-like scales, they've naturally got more space between them when they sit on the hair shaft, and they're literally more rough around the edges. So the hair physically can't hold on to moisture as well as somebody that you know has a smoother, flatter cuticle. That's when the onslaught of big, buffy, crazy hair problems arise. We experience dryness, which makes the hair brittle and vulnerable to breakage. The dryness then causes frizziness, and then when our hair's frizzy, we get buff, and we get no curl definition, and it's just a freaking mess. And it's all from one little characteristic that my natural hair possesses. Like, it's crazy. And that's really why hair products are so important, because they help manipulate those natural characteristics that aren't so favorable. And then that allows you to have more freedom with how you wanna wear your hair. Honestly, after getting my head around that one little thing, my focus went from, wow, my hair is just shit and unmanageable, to, right, where are the products that add moisture and help seal the cuticle? Because after doing my research, I understood that, that was the problem. And don't get me wrong, high porosity isn't the core issue for everyone with coarser hair types, okay? It's just a very common reason that caused those hair problems and it's literally the thing that changed the way I deal with my own hair. Like I can now turn this into this or I can turn this into this. <laughs> and you could be that far away from finding that thing out for yourself as well. But yeah, the core concept I'm trying to get across is understanding your hair the best you can so you can pick the right products. That combination there is what's really gonna save you. And then obviously for core concept number two, having a really clear idea of what you're trying to achieve. What this does is help give us something to measure success against and you know, know whether the product that we were considering buying or we did buy actually work. And it could literally be the difference between you loving or hating your long hair. And that's what I hate. I don't like guys cutting their hair off thinking it's shit when really it's just about finding the right products, man. So that's my two cents on using hair products. A little bit later, I am gonna show you some real examples of how I use all of that theory in real life. But for now, it's time for me to hand the baton or baton, whatever you call it, over to Jesse from Jesse's Barbershop, who also has some awesome hair wisdom for you. We're here. 
Trav White, check. Thomas in action, check. Hey everybody, my name is Jesse, better known as Internet's famous Jesse from Jesse's Barbershop, creator on the rise, a blossoming star in the men's hair YouTube scene. <laughs> I got my own channel that I'm gonna plug at the end, but for now, what I wanna talk about is the importance of hair product from the perspective of a professional hairstylist from the past seven years. Now, I will preface this by saying I don't have my own product line. I have nothing to sell. This is just me sharing my personal experience, actually noticing the difference between somebody who consistently uses product versus somebody who does not. In working with clients over the years, this has been one of the hardest concepts to get people to understand. And there's a few reasons why, I think. But when clients have come into me, sat down on my chair, done their hair, they leave, they're like, wow, my hair feels so good. Jesse, you're magic. How do you do it? Well. I'm just gonna tell you how I do it. Two things. First of all, obviously practice. Professional hairstylists, I do hair all day, all different types of hair. So I have a lot of knowledge and practice when it comes to, you know, the blow drying techniques or the product application, all this kind of stuff factors into, you know, a, a nice head of hair. And second is I've never used anything on my clients that isn't a high quality product. Working in salons, we have access to these. And of course, because I've seen what these products can do, I use them on myself as well, just because of the benefits of it. But like I said, it's a bit of a twofer because Product, so powerful on its own, so strong. Styling technique and knowledge, also very strong. Styling knowledge technique, proper quality product, super strong. You get it, you know, you know what I mean? Hopefully this video here will give you the understanding of the importance of it um, so that you can start doing it yourself and hopefully have better hair. And what I'd like to make very clear, and hopefully you believe me when I say it, is that my hair doesn't look good normally. It's all a ruse. I have a lot of it. My hair type is very dense and coarse, but with that density and coarseness comes a lot of problems. And that's the case with every hair type that's out there. You are stuck with the hand that has been dealt to you in terms of hair type, but there are things you can do to optimize your hair and make an overall more optimized and enjoyable hair experience. And this is what we're gonna be showing you today, because this is what my hair looks like when I get out of bed with no product in it and this is a good day. And this is more or less what I'm able to achieve with a little bit of product application. Now that clip that you had just seen of that styled hair was like a day or two ago from today. So this is what my hair looks like a day or two after I had styled that. And it's still looking pretty good, which is a huge difference from waking up like this. So as we get into my care and styling routine, what I would like to leave you with is to take my hair as an example. If I didn't know what I was doing in terms of styling and product application, my hair would not be something that I'd be happy with. I'm fortunate enough that this is the path I chose in terms of education, so now I know what I'm doing. But if you're somebody who's struggling with your hair at home, there are ways to fix it and product is oftentimes a huge step in the right direction. Is that good? I think it's probably good. Let's get into the styling. Alrighty, thanks a bunch for that, Jesse. That was super informative. Now that the theory part of this video is done, it's time to walk the talk and show you how we do our hair. And for my contribution of this part of the video, I'm gonna use products to turn my frizzy, wiry bird's nest into soft, bouncy curls with loads of definition and also do a nice, soft blowout using product and low heat with my blow dryer. So first up, I'm glad to say when it comes to turning this outrageous mop into a bouquet of luscious curls, the process is not all that crazy. And because I know that natural high porosity is the reason my hair looks like this to begin with, I'm looking for select products that can inject my cuticles with moisture and then seal them off so I can maximize the wear out of this style for at least a few days without needing to do it again. Step one is to start with damp, freshly washed hair, which will allow me to shape everything the way I want before setting it in place. Step two is to use some kind of moisturizing product like leave-in conditioner. I've played around with a few different leave-in solutions over the years, but lately I've become a real fan of this Manuka Honey Hydrate and Repair Multi-Action Leave-In Spray by Shea Moisture because it not only helps add that hydration that I need, but it also contains wheat protein, which also helps keep my hair nice and strong. For step three, I'm gonna use a shit ton of mousse to help lock in that moisture and help define each curl so that my natural 3B to 3C curl pattern can really shine through. Today I'm using the Curl Whip by Cake, but I also like to use Silhouette by by Schwarzkopf. They both do a great job for my hair and I would highly recommend either of them. Little tip as well, one mistake I always used to make with mousse is I never used to use enough to actually see the benefits of it. And let me tell you, do not be afraid to go nuts on this stuff. It really makes a difference and if you don't hear a squelching sound in your hair after application, you're not using enough. Step four, after applying my mousse, I'll fiddle around with a bit to identify my natural curl families 
and get the hair into formation. This part is important because after we've shaped everything and we've got it to where we want it, we're not allowed to touch it again until it's 90 to 100% dry. We call this step forming the cast. And the cast works exactly like a cast that you would get when you break your arm. It holds everything together until the time is right. Step five is the drying process. Now you can either let your hair air dry naturally, which I actually feel like gives me a better result in the end. But if you don't have time, you can speed that process up by investing in a hair dryer that has a diffuser attachment. Of course though, if you use any heat styling, make sure you use some kind of heat protectant beforehand to ensure that you're doing everything that you can to help reduce damage. Once we're 90 to 100% dry, your hair should feel a little bit crunchy, which means it's time to finish up the style by breaking the cast with a small amount of hair oil and using a scrunching action. You'll notice that your curls will gain a heap more volume once you start breaking the cast, which is awesome, but they also don't lose their definition. This is how I measure success when it comes to this particular routine. And what the oil is going to do is to help make them feel softer and more luscious. The oil also acts as a sealant to help my cuticles retain the moisture that I just put into it. There's a few oils that are good for sealing moisture into hair and the two that I like to use is a mixture of argan oil and jojoba oil which the riot control oil that I'm using today contains both and that's literally how I do it and this style should last about three days depending on how I sleep and maintain it afterwards of course and this routine is quickly becoming one of my go-to's because it's not invasive on the hair it requires minimal to no heat styling and I can't wait to show you guys this again once my hair reaches the longer lengths now before I show you my blowout tutorial, we're going to pass the baton again to Jesse so he can show you how he manages his curls. So, as always, because I need to style my hair from wet, I have just freshly shampooed and conditioned it. And because I know people are going to ask, I am currently using Goldwell's Dual Senses Rich Repair Shampoo and Conditioner. It's a high quality brand that I trust, but on the more affordable end as opposed to things like Bumble and Bubble and Kerastase, which I also use. And to demonstrate my thinking behind this, I've created this simple chart for you to follow along with. As you can see, the further right on the chart, the higher the cost, and the further up on the chart, the more benefit you receive from the product. Now here in this bottom left section, we have what I like to call the drugstore hole. Now in this nasty little hole, we have some naughty, naughty products that you should do your best to stay away from. Even if they've run million dollar ad campaigns and you've seen it on TV, if they're selling it in a drugstore and it's $6 a bottle, it's probably not up to industry standard. Now this section here, I like to call the glory hole. And the reason for that is while well, one, it's really funny, and two, this is where you're gonna find high quality but still affordable hair product. For most people, I recommend finding your go-to day-to-day shampoo and conditioner in this glory hole range. And then we have the very top corner where if you can afford it, this stuff would be really awesome. But if you can't afford it, you're just missing out on like super luxurious stuff, not super necessary. But anyways, back to styling. So after the high quality shampoo and conditioner, we move on to a high quality curl cream. What I'm using today is Orbe's Curl Enhancing Styling Butter. Now Orbe is as far right and up as you can get on that chart, but as long as it's something in that glory hole, you should be left satisfied. And once everything's dry, I kind of feel it out, and if it's good enough, I'll leave it. But if not, we do have another option. What I do here is apply Bumble and Bumble's Curl Reactivator, which serves a few purposes, but in this case, it's basically just a mist form of curl cream. This allows me to retarget any problem areas as well as seal away any flyaways without having to reapply a heavy curl cream and potentially pull out my curl pattern. And that's it, a healthy hair routine that I'm comfortable with. Now it's your turn to find yours. Go get in that glory hole. So that's it for me, guys. I hope that helped you somewhat. And I really like to thank you guys and Thomas for having me on the channel. Because this is like super important stuff that I've kind of given up on telling people because nobody ever believes me. But the fact that you're watching and you watch this far shows that you're on the right track. Because watching styling tutorials and finding inspiration is great. But when it comes to you realistically being able to achieve your hair goals, you have to start with the foundations, which is hair health, and hair care. Anyways, if you like this video and you like my vibe, feel free to go on over to my channel, Jesse's Barbershop, check it out there. We've got a free Discord community, we've got a subreddit that we're kicking off, and it's uh, a lot of fun. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. Thomas, thanks again for having me, my friend. Glad to have made the connection, and uh, we'll uh, hopefully see you guys around. Okay, we're on the home stretch. One more routine to go, and this time I'm gonna show you my smooth blowout style. To be honest, I'm trying to steer away from heat styling on a regular basis, particularly because I really want to give my natural curls a chance to shine, and although I always use a heat protector, and I'm also using a hair dryer that's designed to avoid extreme heat, using heat can still contribute to damage in the long run, 
but having the option to switch it up when I feel like it is certainly a good option to have. Now, I'm always going to begin with a hydrating product, just like I did with the previous routine, because I know that my natural hair could always use more moisture. In step two, this is where we switch it up a little bit. So this time, because I'm trying to achieve a soft, smooth look, I don't necessarily want to use products that are gonna create a cast or emphasize my curl pattern. What I need is something that can make my natural rough edges of my cuticle appear more flat and smooth. That's when I reach for products like the Dabro Smoothing Balm and the Color Wow Dream Cocktail. I'm literally obsessed with these two products because these are the secret source to completely transform the physical appearance of my cuticles when they're activated with heat. And just like the mousse, I do not hold back on using lots of these products. One thing I've learned with my hair in particular is it needs quite a lot of product to actually achieve great results. So once those are applied, before I start heat styling, I'll chuck some product with a medium hold in my hair to ensure that nothing moves when I'm done. The Blue Man Monarch Matte Paste has made a lot of regular appearances on my channel and it is by far my favorite Blue Man product to date because it gives that great hold that I want, it adds a little bit of texture and it's really easy to apply and style with. Once that's applied, it's time to whip out the Dyson with the concentrator nozzle. I cannot stress it enough guys, using a nozzle when blow drying your hair for this kind of look is imperative because it narrowly concentrates the airflow from the dryer which closes the larger gaps in the cuticle that I was mentioning earlier and it makes the appearance of the hair look a lot smoother. A hot tip as well, when you're blow drying, you always wanna go with the grain, not against it. Just to give that a little bit of context, what I mean by that is if I were to hold a single strand of hair and hold it vertically with the root in my fingers, I would blow downward with the dryer because that's with the grain of the cuticle. If I blew upward, it would raise the gaps between those cuticles even more, which would actually end up making my hair look even frizzier than normal, which is definitely what I don't want in this scenario. So as I'm blow drying, I'm using my comb or my round brush with my dryer in a backwards or downwards motion to shut that cuticle. Once I've made my way around the whole head in sections, I'll finish up this look with a little bit of oil. Same reason as before, it's to add a little bit of extra softness as well as help seal any moisture remaining in my hair. And voila, that's how I achieve my smooth blowout. And there we have it guys. That brings us to the end of this video. I understand that was probably a lot of information, but hopefully this gave you some inspiration to get out there and start doing some more research and experimenting with your thick, coarse, curly hair because I'm telling you, there is a solution. Your hair is not shit by default. You're just a few products away from figuring it out and I would hate for you to prematurely cut your beautiful hair before you've figured out how to work with your hair type, okay? No, long hair doesn't work for everybody but there is ways of maximizing it. You just gotta like be patient with it and put the effort in. And just like anything, the more time you spend with it, the more familiar you get with it, Eventually, you start getting the hang of it and it becomes second nature, just like driving a car or tying your shoelaces or brushing your teeth. It becomes easier as time goes on. You just gotta put that effort in. And it definitely does not need to take you seven years, okay? I really hope you enjoyed this. Jesse, my friend, it's been a pleasure working with you. Thank you so much for gracing us with your presence today. It was really, really cool. Uh, to have you on board. You're an absolute champion and I can't wait to see what you come up with in future. Also guys, please don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you in my next video, okay? Grow long and prosper. Until next time.